Good morning, Calvary Chapel young Good people. Good morning. It's all, we're still in Texas. Yep. It's almost as windy here as it has been in Half Moon Bay. Almost. It's, I think it's windy all over the world. Yeah, I think it's just blowing. It's just blowing. We had to tie the dog down. <laughs> no, we didn't. But we did tie down everything on the boat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had to have the boat checked out. Yep. Because it was blowing very hard at the marina. So, what are we going to study this week? Today we're going to study about Jesus choosing 12 disciples. And last week, what did we study? Well, last week we talked about a wedding, one where Jesus performed his first miracle by turning ordinary water into a very special wine. And, and today we're going to learn about how Jesus called his disciples, very ordinary people, to join him in his ministry and do very special work with him. He didn't pick them, though, just to do the work. No, he really had a, a plan for it. He did. First of all, he wanted to be their friend. He did. And friendship, as you know, is very, very important. Secondly, he was going to be their teacher. Mm -hmm. He was going to teach them how to do certain things. In this case, he was going to teach them and prepare them how to go out into the world and spread the good news of Jesus Christ after Jesus ascends to heaven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then he also was going to help them to fulfill the great work of proclaiming the good news of his salvation to the ends of the earth, to 12 people. When he ascended, when he was to leave this earth and ascend into heaven, when he was resurrected after he died, these 12 people were the people that he chose to spread the news, to spread the teachings of our faith to the ends of the earth. And it's amazing. He didn't choose the learned. No. He didn't choose the wealthy. He didn't choose those in power. He chose everyday people, he chose fishermen, tax collectors just everyday folks yep. and so we're going to study about who the 12 disciples are mm -hmm. and what they accomplished so in preparation for that my dear wife would you lead us in prayer I will. dear heavenly father we thank you again for bringing us together to learn about your word we thank you for sending your son jesus we thank you jesus for the sacrifice you made for us and we thank you holy spirit for indwelling in our hearts so that we can continue the good mission and the good work that Jesus chose 12 disciples to help him complete. So um, please, Lord, make us good learners today. Make us good teachers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to start in Matthew chapter 4, yeah. verses 18 through 22. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers. Simon, called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting the net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Then he said to them, to them, Follow me, and I will make you fisher of men. They immediately left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets, and he called them. And immediately they left the boat and their father, father excuse me, and followed them. Staying in Matthew 10, uh, verses 1 through 3. And when he had called his twelve disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. Now the names of the twelve apostles are these. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, John, his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Levius, whose surname was Thaddeus. And continuing with verse 4, 
Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. The uh, book of Mark in chapter 3 uh, almost has the same identical mm -hmm. uh, wording as Matthew. So we'll skip Mark and we'll drop down to Luke chapter 6, verses 13 through 16. And when it was day, he called his disciples to himself. From them, he chose 12 who he named apostles, Simon, who he named Peter, Andrew, his brother, James, John, Philip, and Bartholomew, Matthew and Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon, called the Zealot, Judas, the son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. Then in Acts, verse 1, chapter 1, verse 13, And when they had entered, they went into the upper room, where they were staying, Peter, James, John, and Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas, the son of James. Now, Judas, the traitor, was no longer with them. He, this is a, a, a different verse that we're looking at, and he's no longer part of the disciples. This is where Peter is leading the twelve, or at this time it's eleven. Now it's time for question and answer. It is. And I get to do the questioning. Okay, I'll try to do the answers. Okay. I might have questions about my answers. You may, huh? I often have questions about your answers. <laughs> All right. Jesus lived in a town near what lake? He lived near what's called the Sea of Galilee. And um, the sea, sea of Galilee is where most of these, these disciples made their living as fishermen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What did Jesus say he would make Andrew and Simon? He said he would make them fishers of men. So these were their profession were, were as you said, fishermen. They they knew the excitement of catching fish. They knew the excitement of going out and hopefully bringing in fish, nets full of fish, and how exciting that was. So now what Jesus was having them do was to go out and turn turn men and women into believers and followers of, followers of Christ, which is not the same as just throwing a net or just grabbing hold of them. No, no, not the but same it's, at all. But it's, 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 a, it's a likeness. What were the men doing in their boats when Jesus called them? They were fixing their nets. So just like boats today, when you have people like down at our harbor who fish for a living, they have to take care of their boats and their equipment, and that's what was happening here. The would-be disciples were fixing their nets. Their nets might have had a hole in them, or they maybe were trying to make them bigger, but they didn't get to just go buy a new one. They had to, they had to maintain okay. what they had. The one thing we do see as we look at these questions and answers is that there was no hesitation mm -mm. on any of the disciples to stop what they were doing and immediately follow Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that is kind of a blueprint for us. We should be willing to follow Jesus anytime he calls us because he only calls us to do good things and to fulfill our life and for a better life through following Christ. And Christ chose disciples for two reasons. First of all, he chose them so that they could learn from him, to be, observe his power, to come to better understand what it means to be the Son of God who's come to earth to secure our salvation. So he chose disciples so that these, these 12 people could learn from him. And secondly, he chose these people, these men, to show us that he can use ordinary people these were not kings, they were not princes, they were not the rabbis, they weren't. These were just ordinary people. And that's, that's what we need to learn, and we need to remember that these ordinary people were the disciples. That even almost, what, 23,000 years later? 20, 
300. I have trouble with numbers. 2,300 years later, we still know their names. We yeah. say their names. And we still study them. So it's really, it, it, Jesus could have just gone and picked the first 12. The work that was being done was ordained by God, and it was going to happen. Jesus didn't pick them randomly. He didn't just pick the first 12. He picked these 12. And and we see what happens in a few years with these 12. I mean, they go from just being everyday fishermen or tax collector, mm -hmm. just ordinary people, to becoming what? I mean, in a few years, they're known throughout what we call the known world at that time. Mm -hmm. And throughout history after that time. We, who would have, how many fishermen do you know that 22,000 years from now you'll be remembering their name? Not many. And they didn't hesitate. When Jesus asked him to follow them, they dropped their fishing nets and they jumped out of their boats. They didn't, they didn't have to think of it about it first. They didn't know in their minds, their brain couldn't tell them who Jesus was. But their hearts and their souls could. And they recognized his power and his love. And as their hearts and their souls guided him, there was really only one thing that their brains could decide to do, and, and that was to follow him. Sure. And then our final question of this lesson is, how many disciples did Jesus choose? And I think we should be careful about the words we use because there were disciples and there were many. Uh, but how many apostles were they? And that would be the correct term. Is how many apostles did Jesus choose? Twelve? I think it's twelve. Yes. Twelve. Yeah. That for those first 12 that he chose to help spread the news, the good news, that was 12. And even though he called them to this, as, as I said before, these were ordinary people. They did not know how to do this job. And they were going to walk with Jesus over the course of his ministry for the next three years and learn the job. And they, they weren't instantly qualified to do it on their own through Jesus and growing stronger in their faith and their practices following God and Jesus, they became able to do it. In fact, it, it took them time, even up into and including the death and resurrection mm -hmm. of Christ before mm -hmm. they fully understood yep. what Jesus had been teaching them the past three years. We have the opportunity by studying God's word to know the beginning, the middle, and the end. They didn't have that opportunity. They had the three years. Now they saw many miracles uh, and they were able to perform miracles and we describe miracles as an event that uh, has no explanation for it. It exceeds what we consider uh, science or the boundaries of nature it exceeds that and they did have that opportunity but we have God's word and we're able to study it and to have a better understanding far more than the early disciples and followers of Christ had and uh, we should rejoice in that and we should make sure we have time every day mm -hmm. that we spend with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Julia, would you lead us in closing prayer? I will. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you again for so much you've given us. We thank you, Jesus, for coming to earth. We thank you for spending time with humans, with choosing people who would take care of the lessons they learned from you and would pass them down to generations. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that empowered that message to go out across miles, across years, across centuries, Lord. We thank you that we have it in our homes. We thank you that we have the freedom to study in groups, online, 
anywhere we want to. We are not restricted from our practice of, the, of reading the Bible, doing Bible studies. And those blessings, Lord, they bring us closer to you. And they make it just a joy to be a Christian and to be able to share our faith with other believers, as well as to talk to non-believers about our faith. We have that uniquely in the United States, Lord, and for that we are very, very thankful. So we thank you for this message. We thank you for the opportunity to learn about all the teachings in the Bible, and we thank you for the opportunity we have to share that with others. Please empower us, give us courage, give us the words as you promised to do so, to spread your word. We ask you to do this in Jesus' name, and we say amen. 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 Have a good week. All right. We'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye.